Coming in at number 10, we have what is dark matter? There are several mysteries that the universe has brought us, like how did the universe start? What is at the center of the universe? And how is every dog a good boy? Another one on that list is what on earth is dark matter? Here's the thing, we can't even see dark matter. We just kind of know it's there. How does that work? Well, we see it interact with other things even though we can't see it. Now how does that work? Well, I have no idea and we're getting a little too deep into the science for me. But what I do know is that dark matter is supposed to make up more than 85% of all matter in the universe. Well, since there's so much of this stuff floating around in the universe, why is it so hard to find? This is like trying to find a good movie in the DC Entertainment Universe. Well, Shazam was pretty good. But back to my point, the reason that dark matter is hard to detect is because it doesn't interact with the electromagnetic field, or at least that's what people assume. Coming in at number 9, we have Cryptos. So I will admit there is one person who can solve this mystery, but if they did, it would kind of take the fun out of it. Cryptos is one of the most famous codes in the world. It's a massive art piece that was created back in 1988 by artist Jim Sanborn. It looks like a giant scroll and on it are four sections that have massive cryptograph puzzles on them. Three out of the four riddles have been solved, but the fourth has yet to be cracked. There have been a few hints given by Jim himself. He said that the answer from the other three passages have clues as to what the answer is for the fourth. Also, he has revealed some of the words as Berlin, clock, and northeast, and still people haven't been able to get to the bottom of what this thing means. I mean, come on guys, the dude's giving you full words. I'm sure he'll lay it all out before he dies or has the answer written down somewhere in case he passes in an accident, but unless he tells the world or some genius is able to break it down, we may never know what it means. Coming in at number 8, we have Who is Anonymous? A group of global hackers who unveil some of the dirty secrets that are going on behind the scenes. Who are they? Well, we will probably never know. For those of you who don't know, Anonymous popped up back in 2003, and at first it was mostly just them trolling the Church of Scientology. But since then, Anonymous has become one of the most powerful social movements. Whenever there's a serious political event, you can bet that Anonymous will show up to leak some pretty serious information. They have been widespread supporters of WikiLeaks, and most recently, they were seen during the George Floyd protest. It's hard to tell which claims of Anonymous are real, since anyone with a V for Vendetta mask could claim to be them. But I wouldn't want to be on their bad side, because it would seem there is no database that they can't get it into. They have leaked information connected to the police, military services, and even the former President Donald Trump. Coming in at number 7, we have Deciphering the Voynich Manuscripts. If you haven't heard of the Voynich Manuscripts, well let me take you down a creepy rabbit hole that will leave you scratching your head and probably a little afraid to fall asleep. The exact date that the manuscript was written is unknown, but it's thought that it would have been created somewhere in the 15th century based on the type of paper it was written on. The origin is also unknown, because it was written in a language that has never been seen before, but it's thought that this thing could have come from Italy. But the language or code that is used as text in this manuscript has never been deciphered. Even though historians have been trying to figure out what's going on with this book since the 90s, there are illustrations of flora in the book, so it's thought that it could be some record of alchemy or potions. And of course, because it's written in an unknown language, people think it could be the work of the devil. In the end, the whole thing could just be a joke or a bunch of gibberish that some madman wrote down in his spare time. People could be working tirelessly to crack a code that means nothing, or it could be the greatest work of dark magic on the planet. I wouldn't worry about it though because we're probably going to be long gone before someone ever figures this out. Coming in at number 6, we have the Step Geoglyphs. History has left us with so many mysteries that it's hard to keep up with them all. Whether we're talking pyramids, Mayan temples, or is Atlantis a real place? All of these things have us questioning reality. Well, throw the Step Geoglyphs on the list because they are a head scratcher. They were discovered back in 2007 by researchers who were trying to find some sort of ancient pyramid system in Kazakhstan, and what they found was just as bizarre. Markings left on the earth that span for hundreds of miles and come in all sorts of strange shapes. Some of them are large arcing lines and others look kind of like symbols that we would recognize today. The oldest of them was over 8 
thousand years old. The answer as to why they are there or which group of people made them is still a mystery. It's thought that some of the markings could have been left to track the sun and the stars as many other civilizations have done similar things. But there still isn't enough information to confirm that so we're going to jump straight to the most logical answer which is aliens did it. That's the one that everyone likes to use to explain anything old and weird. Coming in at number 5 we have the lost city of Atlantis. Was this a real place? Was it the most technologically advanced place in the world? Does Aquaman live there and rule with an iron claw? There are some people who swear that Atlantis is a real place that succumbed to some sort of natural disaster and might hold the greatest treasure on the planet. There are other people who think that it's all just made up. And then there's a third group of people who just want to hang out with mermaids. Coming in at number 4 we have How Did They Ruin Game of Thrones. Just a warning, there is definitely going to be some spoilers in this point so if you don't want to see it, skip to number 3. Ok here's a fun one, but how on earth did the most popular show on TV, a show that had people clamoring all over it and was the cornerstone of our culture just fizzle out into nothing like it almost never existed. Now there are some ideas as to how this could have happened. There are rumors that the directors rushed the final season. That HBO told them that they could take as much time as they wanted but they got an offer from Disney to work on Star Wars so they sped through the final season so they can move on to something bigger. Later the final season of Game of Thrones was so disastrous that they lost the Disney deal. There were just so many unanswered questions. Why did Arya never use her superpowers? How did a dragon get killed so easily? Why did Euron Greyjoy always pop up in the right place at the right time? Why does Jon Snow never fight one on one with the Night King? What was Bran doing in the whole final showdown fight? Right now we have no explanation for any of this. Coming in at number 3 we have the Copper Scroll Treasure. A lost treasure is always a great way to get people interested in a mystery. You're telling me there's an untold amount of money somewhere and it could be all mine with a little bit of luck and a lot of digging? Well kind of. The treasure of the Copper Scroll was first revealed back in the year 1952. It was part of a great archaeological find in a series of caves next to the Dead Sea. The Copper Scroll is literally a massive piece of copper that is writing engraved into it. Man to think there was a time when copper was less valuable than paper so you would write down all your information in a giant piece of metal. The copper scroll talks about a treasure of gold and silver so large that most people think it's a lie. The size of the treasure would maybe be the largest gold and silver reserve in the world. Now there is some backing to this. At the time that this scroll was written there was a Roman force that was controlling the area. The people didn't like this and they were waging war against the Romans. Now because of this there could have been several wealthy people who didn't want their goods to fall into the wrong hands and decided that they would pool their resources to keep their moolah in the same place and safe. But the question still stands, if the treasure is real, where is it? Coming in at number 2 we have the ghost boats of Japan. Now this sounds like some sort of urban legend but I will tell you that this is a very real thing and it's one of the creepiest stories I've heard in recent years. The ghost boats of Japan have been washing up on the shores of northeastern Japan and no one knows who sent them. They have all been wooden ships with no one on them. Well no one alive has been on them. Every boat that makes contact with the shore has bodies in it. Sometimes it's just body parts like a series of skulls were found on one boat. Other times it's a few bodies laid on top of each other and the numbers vary every year. One year 80 bodies were found in mysterious wooden boats that washed up on Japanese shores. Now even though the exact breakdown on why this is happening is still a mystery there have been some clues that have popped up along the way. One of the biggest is that there was some Korean writing on board of one of the ships and a torn piece of the North Korean flag. So it would be a good guess that North Korea is doing this. Why they would be sending ghost boats with dead bodies in them out into the water? Well we still can't answer that. And coming at the number one spot we have is Jesus real? For the amount of people who pray to this dude and call him the son of God there is zero evidence that he actually walked the earth. Obviously there's a lot of people who think that he did but there's also a lot of people who think the Browns are going to win the Super Bowl every year. There are several things about Jesus being real that have been disproven. There were people trying to say that they discovered the house that Jesus grew up in but carbon dating disproved that as the time frames didn't add 
add up. The house was constructed way after Jesus' time. There are a lot of people that think the teachings of Jesus aren't from a real person, but were put down on paper as a way to guide people to be kind to one another. Similar to the way that tales from pretty much every other culture in the world were not real, but are highlighted as a lesson. There's also a very interesting documentary about a man who was researching all of the scriptures about Jesus, and he thinks that the symbol for Jesus in the Bible was actually a symbol for mushrooms, like magic mushrooms, saying that taking mushrooms was the key to enlightenment and a religious experience. That I can get behind. Coming into number 10, we have Where is Cynthia? This is a very bizarre missing persons case that was also featured on US TV show Unsolved Mysteries. Cynthia Anderson was a legal secretary from Ohio in 1980. The 20 year old loved crime and romance novels, but began having a reoccurring dream that an intruder entered her home. She told her mother about it, but she didn't think too much of it until she started receiving weird phone calls at work. Her employers even went as far as to have an emergency buzzer installed on her desk. On the morning of August 4th, 1981, she wasn't at work, but her car was in the car park. On her desk was a novel that she was reading, but the page was open on a passage that detailed an abduction. A month later, the local police started getting weird calls saying that Cynthia was being held in a basement, but wouldn't give any further detail. To this day, she's never been found, and that case is cold. Coming into number 9, we have Who Shot Tupac? But like, who? Tupac Shakur was one of the most famous rappers in the world when he was killed in Las Vegas in September 1996, nearly 23 years ago to the day. He was just 25 years old when he was gunned down in Vegas, having seen Mike Tyson and Frank Bruno fight, which must have been epic. As Tupac and his entourage stopped at a red light in the Flamingo Road and Coval Lane area, he was shot four times. He died six days later and was not in a state to identify his killer. Earlier that night, it was reported that the rapper had beat with the street gang The Crips. They could have had something to do with it, we'll just never know. A witness came forward, but then they were murdered in New Jersey, thousands of miles away, before they could even submit to further police questioning and identify a suspect. Of course, there are people out there that still believe Tupac is alive and living under a new identity. Perhaps we'll never know. Coming into number 8, we have the children of Hamlin. So you guys may have heard of the Pied Piper, a little fairy tale with a pretty key moral at the end of it. Pay your bills, if not a bohemian musician will steal your kids. Kids, right? Well, it turns out that there is more than just a lesson to this story. There is actually an 800 year old unsolved mystery. You see, the Pied Piper of Hamlin was actually a real man, a piper dressed in exuberant clothing who turned up in Lower Saxony in the village of Saxon itself in 1284. According to church records, he did steal 130 children from the town who were never seen or heard from again. They were simply spirited away. But were they? We just don't know. Coming into number 7, we have Stonehenge. We're taking it back to my home country of England, but what is going on? What's going on with Stonehenge? I don't know. Stonehenge sits pretty in the Salisbury Plains in England and was laid out around 4,000 years ago at a time where transporting and lifting 50 ton sarsen, sandstone, and bluestone rocks was legitimately beyond human capability. Aside from the mystery of how it was built, we also don't know what it was used for. The main theory is that it was for some kind of religious worship, although there were far more cosmic suggestions. The structure is aligned with various celestial objects and has been the focus of pagan celebration, especially around the summer solstice. Archaeological digs have also suggested that a breed of giant cows were used either to assist in the construction or, you know, we're just chilling there, present, mooing. Cows are just so great. Does anyone ever just stop and think about cows? I love cows, even ancient giant cows. Cows! Moo. Recently discovered underneath the stone structure were 17 further mysterious ancient monuments, which just adds more mystery to the pile of mystery. It's a mystery sundae with a side of mystery and a mystery cherry on top. Coming in at number 6, we have the Zodiac Killer. The Zodiac Killer is one of the most elusive serial killers in modern American history. The mystery male murdered at least 5 people, but claims to be behind the deaths of up to 37 people. Despite no arrests, the California Department of Justice has maintained an open case file on the Zodiac murders since 1969. The Zodiac Killer murdered 3 women and 1 man, with 2 other male victims surviving. The killer claimed to have killed many people in the infamous ciphers, which was 
sent to the police. The Zodiac Killer was given their name as a result of the cryptograms sent to the police which were a mystery unto themselves. One of those has definitely been solved but the others not so much. The last known Zodiac murder was in the 1970s so in theory the killer could be dead or they could be living out their days among us which is terrifying. So yeah, despite descriptions of the male killer at the time and many sketches of him, the case is unsolved and the murderer is or was at large. This is so mysterious at number 5 we have the Texarkana Moonlight Murders. Who was the Phantom Slayer? Honestly, we don't know. The Texarkana Moonlight Murders were a series of very grisly killings that took place in Texas in the spring of 1946. Eight people were attacked over 10 weeks with five of the victims succumbing to their injuries. A pair of survivors claimed that the killer was wearing a white pillowcase with eye holes cut out over his head. What a ghoul. All of the attacks happened to couples and took place on weekends. The murders sent the town of Texarkana into absolute panic as I'm sure you can imagine. City inhabitants locked themselves indoors with guns and it was kind of like scenes from the purge out there. The Texas Rangers were even called in and people started arming up and taking to the streets to try and catch the killer. But the assailant never struck again. At the time the Texas Ranger captain saw that the criminal killer was, and I quote, a shrewd criminal who left no stone unturned to conceal his identity and activities. He was never caught. Coming into number 4 we have the dark deaths of Overton Bridge. I've never heard of a dog taking their own life until now but it seems that there's a bridge in Dumbarton in beautiful beautiful Scotland which is A haunted and B has claimed the lives of many dogs. This makes me feel really sad. It seems that since the 1960s nearly 100 dogs have leapt to their death from the bridge falling 50 feet into jagged rock below. Why the dogs have jumped? We just don't know. Reportedly they freak out and they leap. The Scottish Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals has sent teams to investigate but nobody has yet solved the mystery. While the dog deaths are the main issue it seems that a man inexplicably threw his baby from the bridge in 1994. Now dogs are firmly required to be on leashes. Coming into number 3 we have the phoenix lights. What was going on in the skies of Arizona, Nevada and Sonora? In 1997 thousands of people saw what they thought were UFOs in the sky between 7.30 and 10pm at night. Thousands of people reported triangular formations of lights passing over the southern states and in North Mexico. A sizable number of people also reported actually seeing a UFO. One witness who didn't want to be named which I kind of understand said, it was totally silent. I've never seen anything close to the colours from the exhaust that propelled that thing. It was as big as downtown Prescott and completely blocked out the stars. Now, the shared phenomenon actually had a lot of credible witnesses, including the Arizona governor Fife Symington. While the original event happened 22 years ago, possible reoccurrences have happened in 2007 and 2008. Coming into number two, we have the case of DB Cooper. On November the 24th, 1971, the eve of Thanksgiving, a man using the name Dan Cooper successfully hijacked a Boeing 727 plane in the airspace between Portland and Seattle. The man boarded the plane as a passenger and ordered a bourbon and soda. After takeoff, he handed a note to a flight attendant, but she didn't read it, assuming it was his phone number. Creepy. He then leant over to her and said, Miss, you'd better look at that note. I have a bomb. Not what you want to hear. Long story short, he demanded and successfully extorted $200,000 in ransom, over a million in today's currency. He then parachuted out of the plane, jettisoned, gone. Nobody knew whether he landed alive or where he was at all. There was an extensive manhunt from the FBI, but the man's real identity has never been solved. Numerous theories were circulated. The serial number on the cash he stole were also released and searched for, but again, no trace was found. As of 2016, the investigation has been suspended and remains one of America's greatest unsolved mysteries. Finally, coming into number one, a mystery of 
our age, we have the disappearance of flight MH370. Malaysian Airlines 370 disappeared on March the 8th, 2014, flying from Kuala Lumpur Airport to Beijing in China. The aircraft last made contact with air traffic control when it was over the South China Sea, less than an hour after takeoff, before then completely disappearing from their radar. The last words from Captain Shah were, Good night, Malaysian 370. The plane was still tracked on military radar, which suggested that actually it deviated to cross the Malay Peninsula, until finally disappearing from radar altogether over the Adaman Sea. Oddly, no phone calls of distress or signals were sent out or anything like that. No word. Silence. The black box could have shed light on what happened, but it was never found. Neither was the plane or its wreckage, despite millions of dollars being spent on finding it. So what happened? Alien abduction? ISIS abduction? It simply disappeared into a parallel universe? We just don't know. Do you guys have any answers to these mysteries? And again, don't forget to let me know what the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you is. Starting off this countdown, we have Cicada 3301. Now this is one of the most famous internet mysteries of all time. So it all started in 2012 when a mysterious organization, Cicada 3301, posted a weird message on 4chan. According to the message, there was a secret hidden within their posted image, and they were recruiting highly intelligent individuals to try and solve it. They said that solving this would lead them on the road to finding them, and that they looked forward to meeting those that solved it. Well, it turns out that by opening the image file in a text editing app, a string of characters would appear. When decoded, it led users to a website with even more weird messages. Some say that they solved the mystery. Others say that those who completed the puzzle are recruited for something and are never heard from again. What are they recruited for though? That's what I would like to know. In our ninth spot, we have Heaven's Gate. This was a creepy and popular American religious cult on the internet that believed in UFOs. In 1997, police found 39 members of the cult dead inside of a house. Apparently, the members took their lives in order to ascend and board an extraterrestrial spacecraft and go to another planet. They were all found wearing arm patches that read Heaven's Gate Away Team. To this day, the website is still up and running, and no one knows who's running it. Now, in 2015, the administrators behind the website did do an email interview. In the interview, they called themselves Tela, which stands for the evolutionary level above humans. They claim that the dead members are actually alive and have transcended their human bodies and that they will come back eventually. To this day, their identity still remains unknown. In our eighth spot, we have Chip Chan. This is one internet mystery that has always left me unsettled. Chip Chan is the name given to a Korean woman that was discovered in a 4chan webcam thread in 2008. It immediately caught the attention of a number of people because the footage revealed this woman sleeping in unusual positions for long periods of time at unusual times of day. In fact, at first, people thought that she was dead. She also sleeps in weird positions like on a chair or on the floor. After doing further investigation, users found that this woman believes that a mind control weapon was implanted into her ankle bone and under her left eyebrow. This chip is said to control her and that's what's making her sleep all the time. She also claims that she is being held by a corrupt officer named P and that she installed these webcams into her home so that she can see what happens to her when she's sleeping. This story is just so freaking creepy and I don't think it's ever been solved. In our seventh spot today, we have Kanye Quest. Yep, not Kanye West, Kanye Quest. Kanye Quest 3030 is an RPG game that was released in 2013. Now it seems just like a silly game. It centers around Kanye West, who on his way to take out trash, travels through a wormhole and into the future. He then has to take down an evil dictator. And you got Tupac, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre in it, and you can have a rap battle with them. Now the game seems pretty harmless. That was until a player found out the game's dark secret. 
At one point in the game, you can interact with a displayed message. It seems like gibberish at first, until people realized it said, Ascend and worship the based god. Further on in the game, you are asked to enter a prompt, and you can type anything you want. But if you type ascend, the whole game changes and you're put in this secret area. Eventually, players got to a screen that congratulated them on being an open minded and curious thinker. They then instructed the player to not tell anyone about what they found. It then asks if you wish to participate. If you click yes, then they give you instructions on an exercise that you need to complete. Furthermore, players discovered a QR code that led to a now defunct website. In the end, it was discovered that the game has been tied to the religious cult of Ascensionism and to a mysterious company, Ascension Records. The true meaning of the secret of this game has remained unsolved to this day. Coming in at number six, we have Jack Frozy. Now, there are a number of creepy pastas out there about someone dying and then their loved ones receive phone calls or Facebook messages or texts from the dead person. Well, this actually happened in real life. Jack Frozy was a 32 year old man from Dunmore, Pennsylvania. In June of 2011, he died suddenly and unexpectedly from a heart arrhythmia. Five months after Jack's death, his friend received an email from Jack's account with the subject line, I'm watching. Soon his family started getting emails from Jack as well. Now, of course, they didn't believe it to be Jack for a second, but whoever it was, they knew intimate details regarding his friends and family, details only Jack would know. To this day, no one knows who sent these emails. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with GhostNet. This is the name given to a large scale cyber spying operation uncovered in 2009. In fact, it has been described as one of the most extensive operations ever uncovered. Yet, no one knows who was behind this operation. So, in 2009, it was found that an organization infiltrated over 1,000 computers across 103 countries. They did this by sending emails with attachments or links to individuals or organizations. By opening the file, the user would unknowingly download a virus onto their computer that allowed the hackers to gain complete control of their computers so they could read and send data and even turn on someone's webcam and microphone. Like I said, no one knows who was behind this. But since the network originated in China, some believe that the Chinese government had something to do with this. Others believe that the CIA or the Russian government were behind this. In our fourth spot, we have the most mysterious song on the internet. This is the title given to a song with an unknown name, sung by an unknown artist with an unknown origin. It all started when a man named Darius came across an old cassette and liked a song on there and wanted to find the name of it. Him and his sister couldn't figure it out, so they turned to the internet for help. Soon, thousands of music enthusiasts came forward to try and figure out this song. To this day, no one has figured out who's behind this song, hence why it's given the name the most mysterious song on the internet. What's even weirder is when the song was shared online, a number of people recognized it. They said that they have heard it before, they just can't put their finger on it. In our third spot, we have Markovian Parallax Denigrate. This mystery started back in the 90s and revolves around a number of weird and confusing posts that appeared to be complete gibberish. Back then, there was something called Usenet, which was like a forum. On August 5th of 1996, hundreds of weird messages started appearing on Usenet. No one knew what they meant, but people knew that they were related because each post had one thing in common. The subject line read Markovian Parallax Denigrate. Turns out that these are secret codes, but no one has been able to crack them yet. In our second spot, we have Ted the Caver. Now, some say this is merely just a creepy pasta, whereas others believe it's a true story. I'll let you decide what you want to think. Back in February of 2000, a man known only by the name of Ted the Caver posted about exploring an unknown virgin cave passage in the US. According to Ted and his journal entries, when him and his friend entered the cave, they found a narrow passageway with a small hole. So they drilled the hole and decided to explore it further. But as they went to explore this cave, weird things began to happen. Him and his friend heard ghastly screaming, they found weird hieroglyphs on the cave walls, and apparently encountered evil spirits in the cave that followed them home. All of this was backed up with images of him and his friend exploring the cave. The last post was on May 19th, 2001, when Ted revisited the cave and said he would update everyone when he returned home. 
he never updated the post, making people believe that he never returned home. In fact, this mystery was so popular that a horror movie was made off of it. And in our number one spot today, we have the Lake City Quiet Pills. Now, this is another very weird and wild one. So it starts with the death of a Reddit user, Religion of Peace. He was a moderator for the subreddit Jailbait, which is disturbing on its own. But he mainly posted about his military experience and guns, and would encourage posts to get people to upload pictures on his website, LakeCityQuietPills.com. But as many investigated his site, they realized that hidden inside the site's HTML code was a motto. It said, and I quote, dispensing Lake City quiet pills to lousy bastards in need of permanent rest since 1968. It continued on saying, Shade is maintaining the calendar and access to the file dump. Angel has the job postings for EU and Asia. We aren't sending anyone to me. No one. Don't ask for listings. Then what followed were what appeared to be job listings. Here are some. Immediate need, 8 to 10 Chinese Korean, fluent Korean dialect accent details after contact 12 week half pay and they went on to say that they needed Arabic French people no papers no problems a lot of people then theorized that this site was used as a way to pass assassination jobs back and forth as people dug further they found a government-owned bullet factory in Missouri called Lake City ammunition plant Meaning, the quiet pills that they're referring to are bullets. I mean, yeah, you get shot by one of those and you'll be quiet. So maybe this website was a front for some illegal activity. Starting off this countdown, we have Yuki Onishi. Her case is often referred to as the girl that vanished into thin air, and you'll understand why in a second. On April 29th, 2005, five-year-old Yuki was out celebrating Greenery Day with her mother. Greenery Day is a national holiday in Japan meant to appreciate nature. On this day, people often go and dig up bamboo shoots as part of the celebration. And that's what Yuki and her mom were doing along with 60 other people. After Yuki showed her mom the first shoot that she found, she ran off to find more. 20 minutes later, her mom realized that Yuki wasn't with all the other diggers. That's when the search began. When they couldn't find her, the police were called and police dogs came to sniff out the scene. This is where it gets strange. All the police dogs followed her scent to the middle of the forest where her scent just stopped. This made it seem like she vanished into thin air from that spot. Sadly, Yuki has never been found and we don't know what happened to her or where she disappeared to. Moving on to number nine, we have the Pyramid Mystery. If you're a fan of the lost city of Atlantis, then this might be the mystery for you. There is a city that lies sunken underwater just off the coast of the Japanese island Yonagani. Many believe that the city is around 5,000 years old. There are complete pyramids, ruins of castles, structures etched with faces, and rock sculptures that look like animals all underwater. It's theorized that a terrible earthquake caused the city to be engulfed by water. But to this day, we don't know the true origins of this mysterious underwater city. Moving on at number eight, we have the man with 21 faces. In the 1980s in Japan, a group who called themselves the Mystery Man with 21 faces stocked supermarkets with cyanide-filled candy. It all started when they kidnapped Katsuisa Izaki, the president of a major company that was famous for selling sweets. They kidnapped him from his home and demanded a ransom of 1 billion yen. Thankfully, he escaped, but that was just the beginning. They continued by targeting other companies and by putting cyanide laced chocolates on supermarket shelves. They also wrote several taunting letters to the police. To this day, no one knows who they were. The case was closed in February of 2000 and no arrests were ever made. Taking our way down the list at number seven, we have the chain suicides. Okay. This one is a super mysterious case. Between June and July of 1992, five people all committed suicide in Kumatori, Osaka. Three of the people were friends, and apparently several months prior to their death, two of their other friends died in what was deemed as accidental deaths. All seven of these deaths happened within 0.7 miles from each other. Now, What's weird is how the deaths look like staged suicides. One person was hanging from a tree, but police couldn't find what the person stood on to reach the tree. And then one girl had a stab wound to the neck and chest, which police say 
is odd. Lastly, some of these victims all reported that they were being stalked prior to their death. Although we don't know who committed these crimes or why, it seems like the group of friends were targeted and then killed. In our sixth spot, we have Body in the Bag. On April 21st, 1996, a group of students were headed home from school when they saw a bag in a bamboo grove. They had seen the bag there before. In fact, it was said to have been there for about a month. They decided to finally see what's inside. When they poked it with a stick, a human hand fell out of it. The bag had the remains of a middle-aged man shoved into it. He had bruises all over his waist and some of his teeth were missing. Police were unable to identify the man or figure out what happened to him. To this day, police keep a sign near the area where the man's body was found, with hopes that someone will be able to identify him. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Tsunami family murder. On April 28th, 1995, at around 2.30 a.m., the house belonging to 70-year-old Haru Haiko and 67-year-old Midori Tsunami was set on fire. Police later found their bodies on the first floor. They were both decapitated. Haruki had a knife in his stomach and Midori had stab marks all over her body. What sucks is that the fire destroyed most of the evidence in the house, but it's said that the killer stayed in the house for at least five hours after they killed them. Police still don't know who committed this crime, and after years of searching, they still haven't been able to locate the couple's heads. Coming in at number four, we have Yoko Yoshida. On September 29th, 2000, a worker at a Tokyo apartment complained to management about a bad odor coming from one of the apartments. When they went inside, 28-year-old Yoko Yoshida was found dead laying on her bed. Now, Yoko was a well-known manga artist. Autopsy reports claim that she had been strangled to death and had been laying there for 10 days or more before they found her. What's odd about her case is that 3 million yen was found in her wallet. Police believe that Yoko knew who her killer was. Maybe she was killed out of jealousy because of her success. Another theory is that since she was a well-known manga artist, that she was killed by a crazed fan. But we still don't truly really know. In our third spot, we have the 42nd disappearance. On March 7th, 1989, four-year-old Shinya Matsuka was said to be kidnapped from her front lawn. Shinya and her family were returning home from a walk. She was outside on the front yard alone for about 40 seconds while her parents carried her younger sibling inside. When they returned, she was gone. It all happened so fast. Their life completely changed in that 40 seconds. Over the years, people have claimed to have seen her, but police have made nothing of these leads. This remains one of the most mysterious cases in Japan. In our second spot, we have the money heist. On December 10th, 1968, a man dressed as a police officer managed to successfully steal more than 294 million yen. So on this day, a car belonging to a bank was transporting that money to another location. That's when a man dressed as a police officer stopped the truck. He then told the workers that their branch manager's home was just blown up and he had reason to believe that this truck was rigged with explosives as well. The police officer crawled under the vehicle to search for a bomb and he set off a flare that caused smoke and flames to emerge under the vehicle. The workers panicked and backed away thinking that the car was going to explode. This allowed the officer to hop into the car and drive away with the money. Police had no suspects, but it's thought that he was a corrupt cop or son of a cop, but these are just theories. They were never able to catch this man. In December of 1975, the statute of limitations for the case passed, so even if a man did come forward admitting to the crime, they wouldn't be able to arrest him for it. And in our number one spot, we have the Mayazawa family massacre. On December 30th, 2000, the Mayazawa family consisting of Miyakio, Yasuko, and their children, Nina and Ri, were all stabbed or strangled to death. It's said that the killer entered their home through the upstairs window. On December 31st, Yasuko's mother visited the home and found her daughter, along with her family, dead. However, the killer has never been identified. Now, this case is truly frustrating. There was so much evidence and DNA left behind by the killer, yet they were still never able to catch him. Apparently, the killer stayed in the house several hours after killing the family. He used the bathroom and didn't flush the toilet. He ate their food from the kitchen and used their computer and even left behind his clothes. But still, he was never caught. And Police officers don't even know why he killed the family in the first place. But there are a couple of theories. 
One is that they were killed by a motorcycle game when Mikio apparently told them off for being too loud several days before. Another theory is that they were killed by a serial killer that would use Japan's train service to get around and commit different crimes. And the last theory is that they were killed by an American soldier. Sadly, to this day, we truly don't know who the monster behind this ruthless crime is. At number 10, we have Tupac Shakur. All right, we're kicking off this list with a case that left the world shook. And still, nobody knows what happened to Tupac that night. It was Las Vegas after the Mike Tyson fight. Tupac had left the fight, was catching a ride with famous producer and murderer Suge Knight. Someone pulled up next to the car and then blam, 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 blasted Tupac. Paramedics arrived, but by the time they got him to the hospital, it was too late. Rumors about who was behind this circulated for decades. Recently, Eminem called out Puff Daddy for killing Tupac, which is crazy if you didn't know about the 20 other people who also have called out Puff Daddy for killing Tupac. Some people think think that Tupac faked his death and is still alive, but I doubt we will ever know the answer to this mystery. At number 9 we have Elizabeth Short. Better known as the Black Dahlia, this case has been so huge, it's been referenced in films, music, television, everything in pop culture. And with over 7 years after this murder took place, there hasn't even been a whiff of a suspect. A few speculations, but nothing hard. It was on January 15th of 1947 that the body of Elizabeth Short was found. It seemed that someone had killed her with some sort of bladed weapon and then mutilated her body. The story got out to the press and they were the ones who gave her the famous nickname the Black Dahlia. The police launched a massive investigation. Over a hundred people were interviewed. It said at one point they had 150 suspects. But with all this blood, sweat and tears being poured into this case, no arrests were made. Throughout the years there have many people who have confessed to killing Elizabeth Short, but all these claims are most likely false. There was even an accusation that famous actor Orson Welles was responsible for her murder. Oh my god, that's some juice. See Hollywood D. At number eight, we have Jane Marie Townsend. The problem with trying to catch a murderer back in the 1950s is you had very little to go on. You couldn't use DNA, there was no security cameras, it was basically an eyewitness or nothing. This is what happened to Jane Marie Townsend. She was walking home alone one night after leaving a party. No one knows what happened to her on that walk home, but Jane didn't seem scared leaving the party by herself. It seemed like she thought she was going to get home safe and sound. The next day, the police got a call about a dead body. When they arrived, they discovered that Jane Marie Townsend had been murdered. The murderer used her own scarf to strangle her to death. The problem was that there was no suspects. Some people thought it might have been an American army member, but no arrests were made. Later in the 1980s, the police were tipped off by an anonymous person. The case was reopened, but it went cold again. At number 7 we have the OJ Simpson case. We are going to dig into one of the most prolific court cases in American history. I think the only thing that could be bigger than this is Trump's impeachment process if this actually goes through and Nancy Pelosi gets her way and they televise the whole thing. That will be crazy. That will be like a global Super Bowl. Everyone is going to watch that. Until that happens, the OJ Simpson case will reign supreme. For those of you that don't know OJ Simpson, he was an NFL powerhouse and an international star. His ex-wife Nicole Brown and her lover Ron Goldman were brutally murdered in Nicole's home. This was a vicious case. Both of them stabbed to death. Nicole's head was nearly hacked off. Now a lot of you at home are like why is this on the unsolved cases? We know that OJ did this. There's even evidence found after the trial that pointed towards him. There was so much evidence pointing towards him that even though OJ won the criminal case, he lost the civil case against Nicole's family. He even released a book titled If I Did It where the if was so tiny on the title that the book looked like it just said I did it. Well you're not wrong, but he was still found innocent. So in a way justice was never served. This case was technically unsolved solved even if the whole world has decided what has happened. At number 6 we have the Tylenol poisonings. You know when you open a container of almost anything and there's that plastic seal on it? Why is that there? Some people think that's to keep in the freshness, but it's actually because of this case in 1982. A few people were dropping dead from Tylenol. This wasn't a bad batch coming straight from the Tylenol people. Someone had been lacing pills with the extremely poisonous chemical cyanide. In total 7 people were killed. Panic hit the streets and packaging was changed forever and of course no one was ever caught. At number 5 we got Betty Shanks. This is one of the most mysterious cases to ever come out of Australia. Betty Shanks was killed one night next to a road and no one ever found out who killed her. It was back in 1952 and Betty's family got the call that she had been the victim of a hit and run. The case was investigated but quickly went cold. Then in 2017 Lyle Reed tried to publish a book giving a detailed breakdown of what happened to Betty that night and who her killer was. 
says. He claims that his aunt was friends with Betty and it was a police officer who killed her. Not in cold blood, this wasn't a calculated murder, but a mistake. It was a police officer that ran over Betty with his motorcycle and then covered up the crime scene. There was a lot of evidence on Betty's body that pointed directly to the police officer. Like tire marks on Betty's body that match a police motorcycle and markings on her face that match a police officer's knee guard. The cop in question has been dead for over a decade but Lyle wants the truth to come out. He attempted to publish the book but all his attempts at publishing it have been denied. At number 4 we have Edgar Allan Poe, the dark and anonymous poet who should be known as the original emo. Someone please make a shirt with Edgar Allan Poe's face on it that says the original emo. I need that shirt. His death is still very much a mystery. He was traveling across America from New York to Richmond but along the way he was spotted in Baltimore. He was wasted. It seemed like the gothic wonder had consumed a little too much booze and was having a hard time. So much of a hard time that he was taken to a hospital where he later died. At first most people thought he just died from alcohol poisoning but after a closer inspection it seemed there was a cocktail of drugs in his system. Edgar wasn't known for being a drug abuser and after the coroner refused to release his autopsy records people started to ask questions. There was a few speculated ideas. Maybe a rival writer put out a hit on the big headed gloomer and tried to take out the competition. There's also a theory that he was a victim of cooping. This is where politicians would hire gangsters to assault and drug strangers, change their clothes and then force them into voting booths. They could have gone a little too far with this and this is what led to his death. And for our number 3 spot we have Jack the Ripper, probably one of the most famous cases to ever come out of old English history. It was back in 1888 when murders started popping up all over. It was mainly prostitutes that were killed in brutal ways. The killer would use a blade, cut open their bodies, take out their organs and often slash their mouths open so they gaped open almost like a giant puppet or something. It was disturbing and it had police confused for years. Letters started showing up at Scotland Yard describing these killings. They were all titled Jack the Ripper. This was the name that the killer gave to himself. It was unknown whether or not these were coming from the actual killer but there was one letter that was delivered with a human kidney and I don't think you get that without putting some holes in some people. There's also speculation that Jack the Ripper was a medical student or a doctor. Because of the precision he was able to cut open these people's bodies. Several murders happened, a lot of them were suspected to be his but it's unknown how many were actually caused by Jack the Ripper and how many weren't. They could have been copycat killers or this could have even been someone who was inside the police force tricking his own people, turning people on their heads. This case is one of the most famous of all time. At number 2 we have the Sodder children. I can't think of a worse thing of happening to a family than this. This might be one of the most heartbreaking stories of all time. So it's 1945. Christmas Eve and the Sauter family is forced to run out of their home because it is burning to the ground. George Sauter, Jenny Sauter and four of their children make it out but then three of their children are still stuck inside. George does everything he can to try and save his children. He tried using a ladder to get up to the rooms but the ladder breaks. He then tries to use his truck to boost himself to their windows but the truck won't start. In the end the house burned to the ground and the Sauters were unable to save their children that were stuck in the house. This left them homeless with a few dead children all on Christmas Eve. The mystery of this crime comes later. When an investigation was done on the shell of the house after everything was dug up, there was no remains found. There should have been bones of each one of the children but nothing was found. George and Jenny thought this could mean that their kids were still alive but in the end they never found out what caused this mystery fire and where the missing remains of their children were. And for our number one spot we have the Zodiac Killer. This is one of the creepiest, most interesting cases of unsolved serial killers that I have ever read about and that's why I'm putting it as number one on this list. There are a lot of unsolved murder cases in America but what made this one so hot was how the Zodiac Killer would taunt the police. He was famous for sending encrypted messages to the police trying to see if they were smart enough to crack them. Some serial killers never want to be found while others want to bask in the limelight. Zodiac even sent the bloodied shirt of one of his victims to a police station. There are five confirmed deaths that are connected to the Zodiac Killer but there could be way more that were just hidden and too hard to find. So we will never know who this man was unless the memes were right and it was Ted Cruz all along. Starting us off at number 10 is death by water. One of the fundamentals of human life is that we need water to survive. Not only that, we're made up of approximately 60% water. We sweat water, we clean ourselves with water, and essentially 
rely on it to get through the day. So what happens when someone is allergic to water? Well, their life becomes about a hundred times more complicated. One of the biggest mysteries in the medical field is an extremely rare condition called aquatogenic urticaria, where the skin breaks out into extremely painful hives or rash anytime it's exposed to water. As of a 2013 medical review, only 37 cases have been reported since 1964, most of which were female, as well as most reporting the condition only arose during or right after puberty began. What's insane about this condition is that not only are the afflicted often allergic to rainwater, snow, fresh water, and seawater, but many are allergic to their own sweat and tears, and even worse is that some people get rashes or welts on their lips and mouth area from just trying to drink enough water to stay alive. While there are a few theories out there about what could cause this peculiar nightmare condition, the underlying cause has never been confirmed and continues to perplex the medical community to no end. Coming in at number 9, Stone Tears. When Chandy was 15, she woke one morning feeling like there was something stuck in her eye. To her surprise, when she went to go and look in the mirror, there was a small stone in her eye, appearing to be coming from her tear duct. Ever since that day in July of 2021, Chadney and her family say that the young girl has cried stones out of her eyes several times a day every day, and no one has any clue why, or frankly how, this could be happening. Allegedly, in just the two months since the ordeal began, Chadney collected nearly 70 stones that had fallen out of her eyes. The family lives in a small rural village in India, and they don't have much money to send her to specialists, but have posted videos online to try and get help for their daughter. According to the doctors that weigh in, there is no known existing condition that could be associated with this, so it's definitely disturbing, especially considering that from what anyone can tell, nothing seems to be out of the ordinary in her actual eyes. Now, truth be told, there are some doctors out there who think it could be a hoax, but nothing has been confirmed and honestly, no one really knows what is going on. Next up at number 8, The Iceman. You know how there are people out there who like to do a morning cold plunge? Well, one man Wim Hof, nicknamed the Iceman, seems to have taken that to a whole new level. Born in the Netherlands in 1959, Hof is, as it seems, immune to freezing temperatures. At the age of 17, Hof said he had a sudden impulse to strip down and jump into a half-frozen canal, and it's not that he felt nothing, but he was able to withstand it for far longer than should have made any sense. This turned him into developing what he calls the Wim Hof method, which he says combines frequent exposure to cold paired with special breathing techniques along with yoga and meditation. In fact, Hof set the Guinness World Record for prolonged full body contact with ice and for swimming under ice in 2000. Then in 2012, curious about if it really was all some breathing technique or if he was some kind kind of medical marvel, researchers in the Netherlands examined samples of Hoff's blood and determined that he was somehow able to manipulate his immune system at will, essentially stopping his body from going into a stress response due to the temperature. Now sure, does his deep breathing help regulate the body? Of course, but Hoff would have you believe it's all in the technique. However, there have been several tragic deaths from people attempting his method and subsequently freezing themselves to death. So. Maybe there is a little more to the story. Coming in at number 7, a human chimera. Due to the nature of how lives are brought into this world, if there's one thing that is never up for debate, it's generally the biological mother of a person. However, one woman named Karen Keegan found herself in the most bizarre and baffling situation. In 2002, Karen was in need of a second kidney transplant after her first one failed, so she underwent genetic testing with her family to see if any of them would be a match and able to donate her. So imagine Karen and her doctor's surprise when the test suggested that genetically, while all her children were siblings, she was not the biological mother of two of the three children she brought into the world. Her doctor assumed this had to be a mistake, and so they tested once more. But strangely, the results were the same. As it turns out, Karen was a chimera, which is a person composed of two genetically distinct cellular lines. Essentially, it turns out that the DNA in her blood was different from the DNA in her ovaries, a phenomenon that her doctor hypothesized came 
came from two eggs that were fertilized very early on and fused together when Karen was a fetus in her own mother. Okay, so maybe this one isn't a totally unsolved medical mystery, but you have to admit it's pretty wild. Next up at number six, foreign accent syndrome. Imagine waking up one morning and suddenly talking in a completely different accent than you have your entire life. While some people might think that you're doing a bit, believe it or not, there is an actual mystery called foreign accent syndrome, or FAS, where the very thing can happen. Most famously was the case in 1941 when a Norwegian woman suffered a traumatic brain injury during an air raid and suddenly and uncontrollably began speaking with a strong German accent. But others include an American woman who suddenly spoke in a mixture of Australian, Irish, and British after a car accident, as well as an Australian woman who suddenly spoke with a French accent after going to sleep with a headache. For a while, it was regarded as a psychological disorder. However, it is now associated as more of a neurological one, usually onset by head trauma or a stroke. But the part that scientists have not been able to wrap their brains around is how on earth people can seemingly speak in an accent they have never been exposed to. When learning to speak, your natural accent is a result of sound patterns you unconsciously learn, otherwise known as the phonetic system. When you are young, accents can shift as you become exposed to new speech patterns, but by the time you reach your teen years, your phonetic system is pretty much locked in. But FAS somehow affects the entire patterning of your phonetic system and continues to perplex doctors all over the world. Next up at number five, no appetite. Sometimes when you're feeling under the weather or on a certain medication, it's not uncommon to find that your appetite has gone down. However, anyone who has ever met a teenager can attest that of all the people, they are usually the last to lose their appetite. But back in 2013, a 12 year old named Landon Jones from Iowa baffled doctors after he suddenly woke up one morning feeling faint and with a horrible cough. His parents wasted no time immediately rushing him to the hospital, where it was discovered he had an infection in his left lung. And while the infection was promptly treated, the worst of it was yet to come. For whatever reason, ever since that day, Landon has never had any kind of appetite or thirst. The boy rapidly started losing weight, going from 104 pounds to just 68 right before his parents' eyes, all seemingly due to the fact that he never felt a hunger or thirst cue. As he continued losing weight, his parents were growing more and more worried about their son's strange condition. But no matter what doctor they took him to, they could never get an answer as to what was happening to him. Landon was given countless brain scans, psych evals, medical evals, and tested to make sure he didn't have an eating disorder, but nothing was providing them with an answer. Some doctors have wondered if he suffers from a brain dysfunction in the hypothalamus, the part that controls hunger and thirst, but his case remains unsolved. Next up at number four, syndrome when Brooke Greenberg was born in 1993, she weighed a mere four pounds and had a hip dislocation. Luckily, the hip issue was fixed through a surgery, and although four pounds is generally revered as a small for a newborn, she was premature and nothing else seemed off, so from what doctors could see, she appeared to be perfectly healthy. However, things started becoming mysterious around the time she was four or five years old, as her parents and doctors noticed that Brooke appeared to have stopped growing. As the years went by, Brooke remained virtually unaged, a phenomenon that confused every single medical professional that her family seeked out. By the age of 20, she still looked the same as she had when she was 4 years old, measuring less than 3 feet tall and weighing only about 16 pounds. And it wasn't only her appearance that had stopped progressing. Brooke communicated as an infant would, giggling when happy, crying when sad, and continued to wear diapers. Interestingly, the only thing that continued to grow as normal were Brooke's hair and nails. The family took her to endless specialists over the years looking for answers to their daughter's condition, but each one was just as perplexed as the next. Some simply said not to worry and that she would catch up, while others prescribed growth hormones, but nothing ever seemed to help their daughter grow. Doctors were completely stumped by this poor girl's condition, calling it Syndrome X. And ever since her death at the age of 20 in 2013, specialists have yet to come up with an explanation. Coming in at number three, eyes shut. 
When Natalie Adler was 17, she awoke one morning to find that her eyelids were mysteriously swollen. While this was definitely alarming to Natalie, she didn't initially think much of it. Maybe it was allergies or something along those lines. However, next thing she knew, the condition was only getting worse. Her eyes started to become so swollen that she eventually wasn't able to open them up at all. Even stranger was that it began developing into an inexplicable cycle where they would spasm shut for three days and then they would open for three days and it did that for 13 years. By the time she was 30, doctors were still at a loss for what was causing her rare condition. A condition that is so rare in fact that it doesn't even have a name. And even after hundreds of tests, they are no closer to understanding her condition. Over the years, Natalie has undergone several surgeries, none of which have proved successful, however said that she does get Botox injections to help keep her eyes partially open, although she continues to suffer from random bouts of blindness each month. Although doctors have yet to come any closer on how to cure her condition, she continues to see eye specialists hoping that one day her medical mystery will be solved. Coming in at number two, twins. There are lots of different kinds of perplexing conditions that have popped up in the medical world over the years, but one of the wildest has to be the story of Sanju Bhagat. Most of his life, Sanju had been incredibly self-conscious about his large stomach, which he described as once being so big he appeared to be nine months pregnant. What's even more shocking is that for whatever reason, Reason, he never received any kind of medical attention for his protruding belly. That was until one day in 1999 when Sanju began to experience shortness of breath and was rushed to the hospital. When he got there, the doctors assumed Sanju had a large tumor in his abdomen and rushed him into the operating room to remove it. However, instead of an enormous tumor they expected, they could not believe their eyes when they opened him up and found the remains of a half-formed twin that had been living inside of him the last 36 years. The condition called fetus in fetu is incredibly rare, having only been documented 90 times in medical literature throughout history. As it turns out, when Sanju had been in the womb, his twin had become trapped inside and essentially became a parasite. Most that suffer this condition do not live long, often not even surviving inside their own mother. So doctors were completely flabbergasted and unable to explain how this man had lived 36 Six years with the twin inside of him. And last up today in our number one spot, no pain. While most of the time we try to avoid it since you know it hurts and it isn't fun, knowing that you are in pain is actually really important because it helps you keep from getting more hurt. Like when you burn your arm on the 400 degree oven rack and it hurts like hell so you immediately move your arm away. Or maybe you break your ankle and it obviously hurts so you stop walking, thus hopefully stopping you from making it even worse. So with that in mind, imagine a life where nothing was telling you you were in pain. Well, that's exactly what Gabby Gingras has had to deal with her whole life. Now 23, Gabby has never felt a semblance of pain her whole life. As a little one, her parents said she would chew her hands until they looked like raw meat, but would never cry. And it was then that they knew something was not right. Then a few years later, Gabby scratched herself blind in one eye and had to wear goggles to sleep until she was old enough to understand her condition. As a kid, she routinely, unwittingly injured herself, once knocking out all of her teeth, another time getting second degree burns from standing too close to a radiator, and even broke her own jaw but had no idea for several weeks. Even seemingly small things like weather conditions don't face her. She has to be reminded to wear a coat in the winter so she doesn't get frostbite, or stand in the shade in the summer as she's completely unaware of how to gauge temperature. Her condition is called hereditary Hereditary Sensory Autonomic Neuropathy, or HSAN, and while there is no cure, and the cause of the condition remains a big question mark to medical professionals, with proper support and learning from an intellectual perspective what could be dangerous, most people can thankfully live a totally normal life. Starting us off at number 10 is the Devil's Bible, also known as the Codex Gigas. Back in the 13th century, there was a monk who was sentenced to be walled up alive because he broke his sacred vows. Obviously, this guy wasn't a fan of dying, so what did he do? He promised the monastery that if they let him live, he would write a book that would contain all human knowledge in a day. Yikes. 
that might be worse than death. In order to fulfill his promise, he sold his soul to the devil himself. Supposedly, this devil's Bible contained a complete Latin translation of the Bible and multiple other texts, such as medical formulas and even instructions for performing exorcisms. This book was created using more than 160 animal skins and apparently takes two people just to lift it. Although, Mysteriously, this book became a bit lighter because 12 pages are actually missing. Rumor has it, these pages contain satanic rituals to summon the devil himself. Of course, there is no way in knowing unless we read it for ourselves, so if any of you hardcore readers out there get a chance to take a peek, let me know in the comments. Coming in at number 9 is the Nazca Lines. Most of us have heard of crop circles before, but what about the Nazca Lines? The Nazca Lines, just like crop circles, are actually named geoglyphs. Now, what is a geoglyph? A geoglyph is a large design produced on the ground and usually formed by plastic rocks, stones, stone fragments, and gravel or earth. The Nazca Lines were first discovered in the 1930s when pilots were flying over the Nazca Desert in southern Peru and came across these massive drawings. The ancient Nazca civilization made up these drawings consisting of animals, humans, and plants around 2,000 years ago. There are said to be over 100 of these drawings spanning a total of 50 square kilometers. And while many can identify who and what created these massive drawings, no one alive actually knows the reason behind them. Scholars theorize that these were massive signs to give incoming sailors directions, or that they were a way to communicate with those above us. Dun dun dun! Here at number 8 we have the Roman dodecahedrons. All over the world for hundreds of years, random stone and bronze objects have been popping up in fields and sometimes even in people's yards. These objects are called the Roman dodecahedrons. These objects have 12 sides with a small circle on each and pegs sticking out of every single corner. Experts have dated these objects all the way back to the 2nd and 3rd centuries CE, but once again, they have no idea of their purpose. Many believe these objects resemble an ancient nautical devices, or were used to sow winter grains or even calibrate water pipes for Roman architects. In the end, all of these are just theories and cannot be told for sure. So maybe go and invest in a metal detector and see what you can find. At number 7 we have the King List. Dating all the way back to the 3rd millennium BCE, this giant slab known as the King List lists all of the Sumerian kings with their respective dynasties, locations, and the times they were in power. This may not seem like much of a mystery to you, but the mystery is in the list of the Sumerian kings on the slab, but what is actually included in the list of kings. There are mythological events inscribed on the slab, as well as the events of the Great Flood and the Tales of Gilgamesh, meaning that the stories from the Old Testament could indeed be true, and that the kings included on the list were actually gods or demigods. Hopefully all that power didn't go to their heads. At number 6 we have the Antikythera Mechanism. Back in 1900, a group of sponge divers discovered a shipwreck in the Mediterranean dating all the way back to 70 to 60 BCE. These divers salvaged three pieces of bronze making up what is now known as the Antikythera Mechanism. This shoebox size artifact stunned scholars for over a century due to the fact that the object's gears and internal mechanisms were far beyond any of the known Greek tech of the time. Some even believe that this object is proof of ancient aliens' visitations to Earth. Although in the late 20th century, X-rays showed that the object is designed to track astronomical movements and was confirmed later by CT scans that revealed inscriptions for what was basically an ancient computer. While the object's use has now been confirmed, what is still puzzling is the advanced construction and precision of this tool that is believed to be way more advanced than what was available at the time. I don't know. If you ask me, I say aliens. At number 5 we have the Stone Spheres of Costa Rica. Ever since the 1940s, scientists have been digging up these ancient mysterious spheres in the Dicus Delta of Costa Rica. Originally discovered by agricultural forays by the United Fruit Company, small stone spheres ranging from a few centimeters wide to 2 meters in diameter and weighing over 16 tons have been popping up everywhere in the Dicus Delta. Every single one of these spheres is man-made and made up of an igneous stone known as granodiorite. Many of these stone spheres have been moved to high profile locations throughout Costa Rica and some are even now privately owned. Everyone seems to love them for their decoration, but the coolest thing about them is that absolutely no one knows why, how, or who made these strange objects. Hmm, seems to be a common theme, huh? At number 4 we have the Bog Bodies of Northern Europe. Ever since the 18th century, hundreds and hundreds of well-preserved human bodies have been discovered in the peat bogs of northern Europe. Some of these bodies have been dated all the way back to 8000 BCE. 
Some of you may be familiar with the famous Toland Man, who was discovered back in 1950 by two Danish farmers in a small town in Denmark. The Toland Man is believed to be from the pre-Roman Iron Age of the 3rd century BCE. His body was so well preserved that scientists were able to look at the contents of his stomach to determine where he lived. Now, I know what you're thinking. Dewey, this sounds amazingly gross and cool, but where's the mystery, my dude? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. All of the bodies that have been found have no explanation as to why they were placed in the bogs, nor why this way of disposal would be utilized. There are only speculations that these people were either sacrifices or social outcasts who were fated to meet their doom. Wow. And I thought high school kids were mean. Coming in at number 3 is the underwater ruins of Japan. Just under the surface off the coast of Yonaguni Jima is Japan's very own Atlantis. First discovered back in 1995, divers and researchers believed the findings to be nothing more than just a series of weird rock formations that included straight lines and right angles. Later, their researches that discovered a large stone gateway, carved stairways, and streets to huge vaulting towers. Many believe the underwater mystery to be the fallen city of the Jomon people. Experts believe that the city didn't fall into the sea like other fabled underwater cities, but actually slowly submerged over thousands of years. It is believed that this site could hold secrets and answers to all of the other theorized underwater cities around the world, such as Atlantis. Now, we could continue to theorize, or we could just believe that Aquaman starring Jason Momoa is actually a documentary and he currently does live in the ocean. I can see it. At number 2 we have the Piri Reis map. In 1929, this old map was found in the Sultan's Palace in Istanbul, Turkey. A legendary commander of the Ottoman fleet by the name of Piri Reis, who lived from 1465 to 1553, is the author of the map. Reis's map is extremely precise. So precise that it actually includes the continent of Antarctica. But wait, hold the phone. Antarctica wasn't discovered until 1773 by British Captain James Cook, but yet? Here is Piri Reis's map showing Antarctica back in 1513. Was Antarctica actually just discovered much earlier than originally thought? Or did James Cook just take credit for someone else's hard work? We might never know. Finally, coming in at number one is the infamous Big Daddy Stonehenge. In case you've been living under a prehistoric rock for the last few thousand years, you've probably heard of Stonehenge. Stonehenge is a giant prehistoric monument that is located in England and dates back to 3000 BC. The monument consists of a ring of standing stones all weighing around 25 ton, originally from a quarry located 25 kilometers or 15.53 miles away from the current monument. Not one person knows how these ancient people could have moved these massive stones without the use of a wheel or pulley, or why they were even formed in the first place. Is it an ancient observatory? Healing place? Did ancient aliens create it as a landing pad? We may never actually know. 